everybody! Welcome to the D. Louise book series. I'm Christina K R I S T I N A. And I thought we'd do a little light reading today. As you know, I'm a series person. I like series. And um, that's why we, we're doing Flashback Monday. So if you checked it out, all the books that I was reading back in 2008, according to my Bible book, book, re book reviews. And don't forget Star Trek Fridays, where we, it's a series. I'm a series person. I like to read the character progression from book to book to book. So, um, I had one of these a couple of months ago. Didn't care for it too much. Um, because I didn't know the characters. And I like to know the characters. Um, when I read the stories, I, I like to get involved with the characters. Um, so this, did I say the D. Louise book series? I'm not sure. I forget. Oh, she's distracting me. I'm sorry. I'm repetitive. But I thought I would give this a little old try. I thought you would try it out with me. Um, Richard Osman, The Last Devil to Die. And I thought we'd just do a little reading to see if we like it. Let's see. Um, shocking news reaches them. An old friend has been killed and a dangerous package he was protecting has gone missing. The gang search leads them into antique business where the tricks of the trade are as old as the objects themselves. Hmm. So, what to stuff? Once a married woman from Swansea, says Mervyn Collins, red hair the lot. I see, says Elizabeth. Sounds like there's quite a story there. A story? Mervyn shakes his head. No, we split up. You know women. We do know them, Mervyn, says Joyce, cutting into a Yorkshire pudding. We do. Silence, not Elizabeth, notes the first silence during this meal. It's Boxing Day, and the gang plus Mervyn are at the Cooper's Chase restaurant. They are all wearing colorful papal, colorful paper crowns from the crackers Joyce has brought along. Joyce's crown is too big and is threatening to become a blindfold at any moment. Ron's is too small and pink crepe paper straining at his temple. Are you sure I can't tempt you to a drop of wine, Mervyn? asked Elizabeth. Alcohol at lunchtime? No. <laughs> um, school at lunchtime. Uh, I'll go at lunchtime. No, says Merlin. The gang had spent Christmas Day separately. It had been a difficult one for Elizabeth. She would have to admit that she had hoped that the day might spark something, give her husband Stefan a burst of life. Some clarity memories of Christmas past fueling him. Sorry. The game, um, uh, Stefan, a burst of life, some clarity of memories, Christmas past fueling him, but no, Christmas was like any other day for Stefan now, a blank page at the end of an old book. She shudders to think about the year ahead. They all had, they had all arranged to meet for a Boxing Day lunch in the restaurant. At the last minute, Joyce had asked if it might be polite to invite Mervyn to join them. He had been at Cooper's Chase a few months and has thus far struggled to make friends. He's all alone this Christmas, Joyce had said, and they agreed that they should ask him. Nice touch, Ron had said. And Ibrahim had added that if Cooper's chase was about anything, it was about ensuring that no one should feel lonely at Christmas. That's true. No one should feel lonely at Christmas. You want the little candle? You want the little candle? I got a candle thing. I don't know if you noticed. I've got a little candle. <laughs> I've also got a library thing. Just for decoration, never use them. We'll never run these. Never, ever, ever. I've got one uh, little hot tip for you. Um, 
if you you can buy one of these and put it on a candle warmer it should last about three months if you leave it on 24 7. i don't recommend that but i know somebody who did just that left it on and it lasted several months i use mine during the daytime and i turn it off at night and mine has lasted i'm not kidding about seven years i bought it in about 2016 ish around there and i still got most of it and i run it almost daily and i've still got most to put on a candle warmer now if you light it with a match on the other hand the sucker will go but if you put it on a one of those candle warmer thingies it'll last a very long time um and no one should be alone at christmas but um, I'm most most of my most of my family ha is deceased, so that's why I need to rely on the general public for those subscriptions and um, likes. I I have this Christmas I have this wish for Christmas that um, I get a thousand subscribers by Christmas. I don't think it will be happening. Um, I also just signed a book deal. <laughs> Stupid stupidest thing I ever did. Um, but we'll talk about my books later. They're nothing special. You will never see my books. Well, if you go in the library, maybe. But, um, where was I? Elizabeth, for her part, applauded Joyce's generosity of spirit. While not, not noting that Marin, in certain lights, had the type of handsome look so often left Joyce helpless. The graph wellness of his voice, the darkness of the eyebrows. Oh, my kisses. Um, Gampy fan, I see, says Ron, pointing to Mervyn's plate. Elizabeth has, has to hand it to him. He's trying to help things along. Wednesdays, I have the scampy, says Mervyn. It, it is a Wednesday, Joyce said. I always lose track around Christmas. Never know what day it is. It's Wednesday, confirms Mervyn. Wednesday, the 26th of December. Do you know that scampi is plural? Iberium says his paper crown fashion me askew. Every angel piece is a scampo. I did know that. Yes, Mervyn says. Elizabeth cracked harder nuts than Mervyn over the years. She once had to question a Soviet general who had not uttered a single word in more than three months of captivity. And within the hour, he was singing Noel Coward songs with her. Joyce had been working on Mervyn for weeks now, since the end of the Bethany White's case. She has so far gleaned that he has been a teacher, he has been married, he is on his third dog, and he likes Elton John. Candle in the wind. Uh, so our mischief, mysterious friend from Swansea aside, Mervyn, how's your romantic life? I have a sweetheart, says Mervyn. Elizabeth sees Joyce raise the subtle, most subtle of eyebrows. Good for you, says Ron. What's her name? Tatiana, says Mervyn. Beautiful name, says Joyce. First, I've heard of her, though. Where's she spending Christmas, says Ron. Lithuania, says Mervyn. The jewel of the Baltic, says Ibium. I'm not sure we've seen her at Cooper's Chase. Have we, asked Elizabeth, since you moved in? They've taken her passport, says Mervyn. Goodness, says Elizabeth. That sounds unfortunate. Who has? The authorities, says Mervyn. Sounds about right, says Ron, shaking his head. Bloody authorities. You must miss her, Cheryl says Ithium. When did you see her last? We haven't just as yet met. Mervyn scraping tartar sauce off Scampo. You haven't met? That seems unusual. Just been unlucky, says Mervyn. She had a flight canceled, then she had some cash stolen, and now there's the passport thing. The course of true love never runs smooth. Indeed, uh, says Elizabeth, never did it, but once she's got her passport, she'll be over. That's the plan. It's all under control. I have sent her brother some money. Now, you know that old scam? Didn't, um, if you followed me over the summer with the Jana D. Leon book, the phishing scam, uh, make a false profile and get people to send you money for stuff, or, uh, 
I know a person that was conned out of thousands upon thousands of dollars because they got scammed into one of those computer thingies. It's just. And you have to know, if you watch TV at all, or if you read the papers at all, no legitimate anybody will ask you to pay for anything with gift cards. And if you get a call about your credit card or anything like that, you call the bank back. You call the number you have in your files for the bank and call the legitimate bank back to confirm it. Because you never know who's calling you. So it definitely sounds like it's a phishing scam. Definite phishing scam. So you'll have to check it out. Oh, hello. Are you going to come visit me? Come here. Come here. I got another visitor. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. You don't want to come here? Are you scared to come here? People don't like being on TV. They just don't like being on TV. Well, come here. Come here. Come here. I'm thinking about getting some more. Some more little itty bitties. Little itty bitties. Climb the Christmas tree. Christmas and knock off ornament. Having to hold that old thing. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Your ornament. Our history. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. What are you doing all the way over there? Your sister's going to attack you. What are you doing? She's standing on her head. Come here. Don't get in a fight now, girls. Come here. Come here, Sammy. Come here, Sammy. What are you doing? What are you doing? Come here. Come here. I don't know what you're doing. You're really weirding me out. What's the matter there, Smoke? Your sister's weirding me out. Oh, well. Well, I'm sorry to have kept you so long. So, let me know if you like the book or not. Sounds like a fishing scheme to me. So, have a good one. Please like and subscribe.